Morning, everyone. Bill Hurtado with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. Frederick, Colorado is about 25 miles north of Denver right here. Uh, just so you know, when you see my phone number of 714, that's my cell. Uh, that's not indicative of where we are. Just keep in mind, we're central in the country right here, 25 miles north of Denver. Wanted to, uh, wanted to mention that here at TransWest, we have 10 salespeople and it is, it is our uh, choice to be able to pick whatever unit we want to video at any given time. And I have to say I was fortunate to have this become available last minute and you'll see why. This is a great opportunity for somebody who wants this particular type of unit uh, but doesn't want to pay the exorbitant prices that many dealers charge. Uh, we have a great chance for somebody to get into a fantastic late model unit with warranty on it still. And let me explain what I'm talking about here. This is a 2022 Winnebago Navion 24D. There are three specific floor plans to the Navion. And this happens to be my personal favorite floor plan. And I'll explain that as we move on. But let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, this is on the Mercedes platform. This chassis has uh, the three liter V6 with 325 foot-pounds of torque. So excellent tow capacity of 5,000 pounds. This 22 model only has 4,600 miles on it. I think in my notes I wrote down 4622, but I just looked at 4633. So right there, 4600 miles. And based on what's remaining on warranty, I printed out some stuff here that I'm gonna talk about at the very end. Uh, so you'll know exactly what you're looking at and what, what is remaining on this thing. So let's talk a little bit about Winnebago. Winnebago, you know, they build 90% of their own components that go into their units. And not only is that important because they're very high quality and not mass produced parts, their availability, and I'm not kidding, 30 years later is something that Winnebago has prided themselves on and been able to uh, take care of the public later on down the road. For example, they build this door themselves. Uh, this door has the little built-in trash container right here or here. It's got the window shade built in, recessed into the panel of the door. It is a very solid, well-operating door with very easy to operate. This also has a uh, lock mechanism that's integrated in with the chassis. So when you hit your button, it locks this door as well, lock and unlock. All right, they've also been able to integrate the screen into its own little pocket over here. Uh, so that's not something that's attached to the door that you have to deal with separately, worry about rattling, that kind of thing. So um, Winnebago has also put in the, uh, the awning that actually works into the radius of the roof on this Navion, which is really nice. I'll hit the button here and this gives you a really good full patio coverage on this thing. Very easy to operate. I can stop it anywhere along the line that I want. And I actually had it open earlier, but we had a little gust of wind. So the thing put itself away. So that safety feature is built into it as well with the little mercury switch on the end there. All right. You may have noticed the awning light underneath here gives you nice coverage on the patio. You've also got a larger patio light over here. Uh, both of those will work whether the awning's in or out, but that gives you really nice light here that's easy on the eyes. And that's, oh, all the geese are flying by, so hopefully you can still hear me. They're going the wrong direction. It's becoming winter and they're heading north. All right, so let's talk about storage. On this 24D, it is uh, very generous. You notice here that you've got the one piece rotocast compartment in here. Rotocast by definition means one piece. And these will support 400 pounds of weight down in here. 
There is an outlet in here that you can plug into and you can drop down through that little hatch on the bottom. So you can have something running on electricity out here uh, that you want and still keep the door closed aesthetically. It's gonna look nice. And there's one less hole into the side of this thing. So that's kind of a nice feature. What you can't see very well is right up in here is the 2000 watt inverter that is on this unit. So 2000 is an important number because with that amount of power, you can actually run the microwave without starting up the generator. So heading down the road, you wanna toss a hot pocket in there, you turn your inverter on, you run your microwave, shut things back down, never had to bother turning on the generator. Generator on this one is the upgraded this comes standard with a propane generator, and this is the upgraded diesel generator on here. It's considerably more expensive for the diesel generator, but the longevity is much greater. The fuel consumption is, well, let me, let me give you the stats. On an LP generator, you can use just over eight tenths of a gallon of propane uh, under a full load. On the diesel generator, you'll use just under a half a gallon of fuel under a full load. Now, coupled with that is going to be the fact that you've got a 25 gallon or 26 gallon fuel tank on this thing, and you'll be able to access the first three quarters of that tank to run this generator. Whereas on the propane, you only have a 12 gallon tank and you can only fill that to 80% capacity. So you can run this many, many more hours than you can the LP uh, generator version of it. So that's a huge plus. We do have 30,000 BTU forced air furnace, and we've got the Truma AquaGo water heater. So that is an on-demand water heater system uh, that you can set up to 140 degrees. It's gonna give you a nice 20 minute long shower if you so desire. And I have actually heard back from a lot of customers how wonderful the water heater system is in this thing. Uh, they really love it a lot. So kudos to Truma on that. Truma is, is really building a lot of nice things for RVs these days. Down low, low next to the generator, you're gonna notice that there is what appears to be an air hose fitting. And that is an extension of the LP system for you to run something out here on the patio be it a, uh, uh, well, they make little ovens, they make barbecues, they make all kinds of different things that you can set out here on the patio and tap right into your system. So very nice in that regard. Over here, we've got the uh, same thing with the rotocast compartments, but they're in white. And again, just a little space they had, so they gave it to you. This is a little outside access, again, had some space, they gave it to you. We won't be able to see it inside very well because I take up too much space in the bathroom, but the closet above this thing has a floor with a, uh, a the, on the floor there's a little hole, finger hole, you can lift that up and you can actually access the contents of this from inside without having to come out here. So nice, that generator uh, exhausts out the rear over here, away from you. Now, of course, uh, consistent with all Winnebago products, we've got LED lighting inside and out. Uh, we all know what the lifespan or longevity of those LED lights are. They say 50 years. Uh, it's very rare to have any type of failure with an LED light. This also has a uh, hitch on the rear, base, uh, rated at 5,000 pounds. And then you've got the 12 volt, I'm sorry, seven-way plug with 12 volt charging already integrated into it back here on the back. So no matter what you're planning on towing back here, you can always adapt down from that seven-way to accommodate your needs. But it's also fully wired with uh, brake control wiring and charge line all built in right there, even backup lights. All right, as we move over here, um, I wanted to mentioned of course that this particular unit also has the 
full body paint, the Bay Mist 2. It's a very, very popular color. Um, it may be the most popular. More of these are, are uh, ordered in by people with the Bay Mist 2 than anything else. Over here, this utility station, I kind of made that name up myself, but all RVs in this country are, are meant to be sitting in the campsite and your hookups are right out here where I'm standing, be it your fresh water, your electric, your cable TV, and your sewer dump. And everything's integrated into one little spot right over here for you, so very easy to hook up. Even if it's late at night, you know, everything's close by. Uh, you don't have to be running back and forth with cables and hoses and everything else. So very nice the way they did that. This next compartment actually does not open easily uh, for the end consumer. There's a couple of bolts down on the bottom, so the technicians can actually open that up and access the holding tanks if ever needed, uh, if any service is ever needed on those down there. As we're moving forward here, you'll notice that uh, this chassis does have the high polished aluminum wheels. Those are really sharp looking on this thing. This up here is your freshwater tank gravity fill. So you can fill up your 30 gallons of fresh water, carry that with you on board, which is really nice. And as we're moving forward here, you'll see the next compartment, again, more storage. If you look down really low in there, you'll see you do have some pass-through ability on this over to the other side. So if you needed to put some long items in there, say fishing poles or something like that, you can certainly do that. And then moving forward to this final compartment, that's where our 12.2 gallon LP tank is and the hydraulic unit for the uh, uh, automatic jacks on this thing. So automatic leveling system. All right. So let's see, uh, this particular unit does have the slide topper installed already up there. Very nice in case you uh, get a little snow overnight. You can open, you can close your slide up. The snow will just roll off of there. In the chassis right here, I just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, Winnebago also builds the Revel. Now the Revel has the same safety enhancements that this does. However, they don't have the power seat feature over here built into the door with three different memory positions. Uh, but they do also have the lumbar and seat inflation support right here. So you can get yourself comfortable in multiple ways. This portion of the seat does adjust in and out. You know, if you've got some long thighs, I guess that would be important. Uh, and of course these seats do swivel. I'll make mention of that when we get inside. So there's a lot of things I wanna talk about on the dash, and we're gonna do that at the uh, final couple minutes of this. Um, while I'm here, let's pop the hood. Maybe a bit redundant for a lot of you because you've, you've seen these for quite some time. But for those of you that haven't, Mercedes makes it very easy for uh, fluid checks or air filter cleaning or replacing, uh, jump start or accessibility to your 12 volt system right here. Uh, oil fill, oil change, oil check, coolant check, windshield washer top off, def fill, everything very easy to get to. All right, you do have the fog light package on this one already as well. Now I mentioned the 24D is my personal favorite. May not be yours and that's okay, but I'd like to show you what I like about this one. Uh, it's, it's got a few things that the others don't in that it has the most counter space in the galley. It has the most seating uh, of any model in the main cab area. It has uh, tied with the most amount of sleeping space inside the thing. 
And because it's the largest slide out of all of them, you've essentially got the most interior real estate on this one of all the rest. So let's take a look. Big, really nice. Big, huge U-lounge dinette. It has the flip-ups down here so you can use it as a lounger this direction. The TV over here is centrally located between both entities in this coach. And I mentioned sleeping. Uh, sleeping on this one, this actually has the largest bed of all the models that Winnebago makes. So I wanted to show you this. This is a Power Murphy bed. This thing will come down real easy with the push of a button. Your legs lock in. And then we'll bring this all the way down to the bottom. That is a nice, big, huge bed right there. So anybody's gonna be very comfortable on that. We've exposed these back uh, cabinets back in here in doing so. Storage is really nice on this rig, inside and out. So I call this like daytime and nighttime. Effortless to convert. You also have a little bit of storage underneath the sofa right here. Okay. So that kind of covers this area right here. Um, I want to point out, the camera may not show how spacious this shower really is. So this rear bath over here takes up about three quarters of the back end of this thing because we got the closet over here on this side. But take a look at how I fit at six foot tall, 250 pounds. I make it in the shower just fine. This is definitely going to get the job done for me. So very easy to, to use this. And then uh, over here, you've got storage up above, medicine cabinet wise, and storage down below. You heard me mention outside, and this, this may be the hard part for you to see, but if you can swing that camera in here and take a look, it's got a nice big spacious closet for hanging. There is the table that you can set up in front of the sofa or between the two front seats. And then that bottom hatch opens up so you can access that storage outside that I was showing you. All right, good privacy in here, the way this closes off. You do have great pantry, really nice storage space in here. Up above, three drawers. Down below, not as much storage because they had to put the electrical components in somewhere. So you've got your AC breakers and 12 volt fuses in these panels right here, but a little extra pantry space. And then you've also behind that panel got a guide to help you with bypasses so that you can winterize this thing yourself. Very easy to do. So let's work from the top down here. This already has solar up on board. It's gonna tell you exactly what the status is at any given time. One place here is going to be where you'll turn your water pump on and off. You can check your battery levels and see where they are, and you can check your tank levels. As you can see, everything's empty, but I do have a half a tank of propane right now. Now this, this is a big deal to me. I have watched the evolution of RV technology for a long, long time. And this 12 volt refrigerator is very trendy right now for a lot of reasons. I love 12 volt refrigerators. For one thing, you don't have any coils in the back like you do on an absorption style fridge. So you have full depth. What would normally be considered an eight cubic foot refrigerator is now a 10. Uh, you've also got the ability to cool this thing in an hour as opposed to four hours on an absorption style fridge. Another thing I find very important is 
This will work in any position. You don't have to be level to operate this refrigerator. It essentially can be on the side of a hill on, let's say you're parked on Lombard Avenue in San Francisco. It's still gonna work absolutely fine that way. And I guess the, the fourth thing, if I may, is everybody has to replace their refrigerator at some point, maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years down the road. This is about a third the cost of an absorption style fridge. So just it wins in every category as far as I'm concerned. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the galley. You heard me mention one of the things I love about the 24D floor plan is the amount of counter space you have in here. Uh, it's really quite generous. So in addition to having both gas and induction and a double sink, you got an enormous amount of space right here to utilize uh, while you're cooking and stuff. The holding tank heaters are on. We don't need that. Uh, the generator start stop switch is up here. Your inverter start and stop is up right down here. And then behind the television, you've got a little bit more space. You can add more components if you want to say add satellite or something to it. You have a Blu-ray DVD player built in there already. And this is how you would actually access your paper towel holder as well. Sound bar built in. So all that sounds really great. Windows. This is another innovative feature in the RV industry that I absolutely love. So let me tell you what I love about this window is, first of all, it's a dual pane polycarbonate. So polycarbonate is close to unbreakable. You can throw a brick at this and it bounces off. So very good security in that regard. Dual pane uh, helps with insulation, but also even more importantly, in my opinion, is the environmental noise from outside is greatly reduced. So if it's loud and obnoxious out there, you're much quieter in here. So I love that about this. This window will open and stay out in multiple positions. You hear the little click and it'll stay wherever you want to put it right there. Um, I also love the fact that there is a little transition slot in every one of these latches. So if you go into that instead of all the way in, you go into that center position right there, you still, you've got a little bit of airflow coming in here, but you still have your security. So somebody's not gonna break into it. And then to top all that off, you've got a full block out from the bottom and you've got a screen from the top. Those will come together if you want it partially one way or the other. But what a great idea. This has been a huge hit. And it is, in fact, an option on here. Despite the fact that this is a pre-owned unit, I did print out the original MSRP so I could talk to you a little bit about the features that are on here. Um, I also like the fact that Winnebago has made lighted drawers in here. So... All of these drawers light up so you can actually see what's going on in there. And they have the soft close feature as well. Because you've got the largest galley of all of them, you've definitely got the most space. You've got your uh, water filtration system down there. So very nice. I mean, they've just done such a great job with this model. It really checks all the boxes for me. The other versions, of course, are going to be a twin bed model uh, that has the smallest little slide out with just a sofa over here. Uh, and then you've got the J model with the corner bed. So both of those, you lose a lot of this real estate that I was talking about in here. Um, I missed something I really want to show you guys. And from the camera right there, I think you'll be able to see this okay. But this has indirect lighting that you'll see above the cabinet and bed over there, above the cabinets over here, and then along the floor and in the bathroom floor down here. So these lights can be on while you're traveling at night and the co-pilot can come back here and do whatever they need to do. Cook a meal, take a nap, use the restroom, watch TV, all of that while you're underway. 
and this makes it really nice to just see around inside the thing. Uh, there's the light for the cooktop over here. You've also got right behind Marlin over there is going to be the uh, switches for, so there's multiple positions on those. These lights are low or high. There you go. And same thing over here, low or high. So very nice, an, an, another little attention to detail, if you will. Uh, the remainder of the overhead cabinet space over here is really nice. I've seen a lot of people put in that stainless steel rack so they can shelve this. But just to review, the biggest galley in all three models, the most amount of storage in all three models in the galley area, the most amount of seating of all the models on the main floor down here, and the most amount of real estate because of the largest slide of all the models. So it's a win-win on this thing all around. I really, really love this unit. Uh, there is a switch over here for your power exhaust fan in the galley area. And of course there's a power exhaust fan in the bathroom as well. So I wanna talk a little bit, this is where, you know, so far what I've done in this video is what we've all done. We have basically just pointed out some features and what have you. Today I'm going a little bit further than I normally do. So I pulled up the original MSRP because we sold this thing new um, on July 20th of 22. Now this particular one, if we look close at this, I want to kind of break down what this means. So these are just the colors of the unit inside here, but chassis deviation, that's a big one. And it's important for everybody to understand what that means. As you can see, chassis deviation is blank over here. So that means there was no de uh, deviation to the chassis, um, meaning they haven't cut anything. They didn't cut the, uh, the size of the 10 inch screen up in the front to a smaller one. Uh, it still has the automatic braking feature. It has the lane mitigation feature. It has the adaptive cruise. So this is fully equipped, this chassis, and that's something you need to pay attention to when you're shopping because a lot of these aren't gonna have those items I just mentioned. This one does. Um, also, I mentioned the dual pane windows. So I think that's a huge plus. The uh, diesel generator, again, huge plus hydraulic leveling and the Primera seats, meaning those Primera seats are the upgraded fabric up in there. Now that being said, this had uh, originally a five year, 100,000 mile warranty on the drivetrain. It had 336 um, on the uh, rest of the chassis components throughout. There is emissions, corrosions, um, uh, safety belt, inflatable restraint. All of those things are covered in, like I said, it's 4633 actually on the miles. But just, I pulled this up because it's important for you to know what you're getting right here. This unit still has all of this warranty in effect. Minus, and I'm, I'm gonna say about 2000 miles from what's on here right here. Uh, since I printed this out today, the 9th of November, 2023, the, the number of months is accurate. Uh, but very important to know that what you're getting right here is something that is covered. So fully transferable warranty at no cost. Then I went a little, little bit further. I broke down the VIN on this thing. So the VIN positions right here on that 17 digit VIN uh, are gonna tell you exactly what you've got in here. And a lot of these are the same, but just the important part was, uh, this is the three liter uh, diesel engine, like I mentioned right there, 170 inch wheelbase, uh, the uh, heavier duty chassis, as far as carrying capacity, GVWR goes. But this is the one I really wanted to kind of key in on. So because of the M code in the, I'm sorry, because of the Y code in the VIN right there, there's a lot of ways this chassis comes. 
but this one is the best. It has the most safety features with airbags, pelvis side airbag, driver and co-driver window airbags. So just a little something that I never really thought there was that much difference in a lot of these, but there really is. So it's important for you and I both to know what you're getting right here. They haven't cut any corners whatsoever. Mercedes has given us the best chassis you can get. And believe me, there's a lot of them out there without this stuff. So that being said, let's look at the cab area up here. These seats do swing around and face this way. So you've got a really nice, big, huge living room if you need to seat a lot of people. There's booster seats on here to bring this up because as you can see, the level of the seat down there versus the seat there is offset quite a bit. So to bring you back up to the same level as everyone else, they have the little booster seats right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump in down here. Let me turn the key on. Okay, so like I mentioned, the 10 inch touchscreen right here, not that smaller one, watch for that when you're shopping for these, because if you have the smaller screen, you've got chassis deviation. And most likely, none of those things that I, the aforementioned things I, I talked about. So adaptive cruise control. Um, let's talk about how this actually works up here. Controls on the steering wheel. These controls on this side handle the multifunction display straight ahead for the driver. These controls on this side handle the uh, large screen display in the center for everybody to look at. So let's concentrate on this. I've got a home button. I push that and this little square thing right here is really cool. How easy is it to use like a mouse pad? So if I slide this, I can get to my different things that I want to look at right here. So that being said, we don't have a phone device connected right now, but obviously we can do that with hands-free. And we just saw the navigation on there. So if I press that, it brings us up, shows us exactly where we are. The radio was playing. I don't like that station, so I'm not going to show you. Um, media, of course, you can hook up to uh, uh, your uh, Apple CarPlay, um, the uh, uh, separate little stick if you so desire. Uh, you can play different music through that in that way. Info-wise, okay, so we've got the operator's manual. We can refer to everything on this anytime we want. Um, got to have the ignition I got to have the engine running for that feature right there. Let me go back in settings right here. And then I'm going to go over to assistance. So at assistance right here, that's where we know that we've got the active lane keeping assist, the active braking assist. Um, those are very important to have on this thing because we know, like I mentioned, I sound a little bit like a broken record, but no chassis deviation here. It's got it all. Uh, I love that about this thing. Moving back over to this screen right here, uh, I've got multiple things I can go to, uh, be it on service, driver assist right here. I can uh, system suspended. Okay, thank you. Let me go back one screen. I got a trip meter. I can put my navigation up in here, but actually that's not true. On navigation right here, all it's gonna give me is the direction of travel right here. But of course you saw the full screen over here had everything built into it right there. I can make my radio adjustments over here, my media adjustments. I can uh, enable or disable my phone. And then of course in the settings menu right here, um, I, can, I can change my rain sensor to low and high. There's multiple ways to make this thing work exactly the way you want it to work. I think um, this being a 2022, it's on a 2021 chassis. <coughs> Excuse me, about the only thing that I've noticed that is a little different up here on this dash, 
when we're not talking about any chassis deviation is this 21 is open on the driver and passenger side right here with the exposed cup holders and then the hatch that opens for you to hook up your media and everything up inside the center one where the newer ones have three hatches that open not a big deal but just a little bit of a difference there uh, when you're looking at the sprinter chassis you might remember that that was the difference there between 21 and 22. okay i think i've pretty well covered it um final thing on this um this particular one does have the overhead bed up above and up here i've got it open right now so it's very easy in and out of the cab area right here but i can also flip this over there is a ladder that's attached right behind me that'll hook up right here so easy entry up into the front that large black bag up on the front right there is your inside and side window uh, uh, windshield and side window covering up in here that just presses into place and then you also have a a privacy curtain to hang if you so desire uh, but this 2022 pre-owned winnebago navion 24d i haven't found a scratch on it it's absolutely flawless it's extremely low miles there's a lot of people out there that trade every year not because they want something different just because they can and that's great that makes a good opportunity for you to take advantage of this we do not have this posted online just yet so please make a note uh, that this is stock number 5u231465 i think and this will be online probably within the next week we'll have all the pictures and then we'll put this video on there as well but this is a good chance for anybody looking for a unit like this to take advantage of saving a lot of money and getting this before it goes live to the rest of the nation so consider this one uh, please give me a call i'd love to answer any of your questions you may have on here you can put some questions in the comments section uh, at the end of this video down below so i can i can access that and answer those for you for for everybody you may have a same question that a thousand other people do and please uh, don't hesitate to send me an email bill.hurtado at transwest.com or my cell phone number directly to my pocket is going to be 714-809-4813 again the comment section is a good place for you to uh, interact with me and i'll help you in any way i can so thanks for watching transwest truck trailer rv got a good one here for you thank you